For a good amount of time, Eidolon hunting kinda went out of fashion, because of the Scarlet Spear event which allowed a lot of players to easily farm whatever arcane they wanted. Not only easily farm, but also buy at very low prices. The Scarlet Spear event hasn't been seen in quite some time, and Eidolon hunting is coming back into fashion. To that end, today we're gonna be revisiting the Vectus Prime, one of the most powerful Eidolon hunting weapons. As always, my name is Lazar, and today I got a couple of builds lined up for you guys. Something cheap, something affordable, something that anybody can build, or should be able to build. But of course, we also got the crazy endgame setup with a truly amazing Riven. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players should already be accustomed to. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. Now, we're gonna be covering a normal standard average everyday build, but our main focus is Eidolon hunting. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Vectis Prime. This video is brought to you by me and all the fantastic people that choose to support the content. Thank you guys so much. Want to get access to fantastic perks such as loyalty badges, custom wallpapers, and the option to vote on what I work on next? That's how this review happened, by the way. Check the link in the cards right now or click on the join button which is next to the subscription button. You can support the channel via Patreon, YouTube membership or even Twitch subs. Links are in the description down below. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Victus Prime is a true blue sniper rifle with two levels of magnification. First of all, you got your 3.5x scope with 40% headshot damage multiplier. Press your secondary fire and you'll get 6.0x scope with 60% headshot damage multiplier. Magazine of 2 and a pretty quick reload at 0.9 seconds. Of course, this being a sniper rifle, you probably also notice the combo multiplier. Essentially, this is why you see a whole lot of players keep shooting Eidolons even when they're invulnerable so they can get that multiplier really high up so they have an easier time doing a one-shot or a two-shot on a Synovia or whatever else they're shooting at. So bear that one in mind. When it comes to usability, I have two problems with this weapon. First of all, the recoil. She kicks like a mule. And second of all, this scope of sorts, the graphics on the scope from my point of view are a little bit on the invasive side. But what you can do is go escape, options, interface, scroll all the way down to the bottom and deactivate sniper scopes. And this makes for a much more cleaner look. Let's be honest here, when you're hunting Eidolons, for example, there's a whole lot going on on the screen. You don't need the scope to get in the way as well. It's supposed to help you, not actually hinder you. One problem though, you don't get to see the actual combo multiplier anymore if you deactivate the scope. From my point of view, it doesn't really matter all that much, but there you go, you can turn it off. Now, let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. But first, mod capacity, 60 out of 60. And if your Vectis Prime has only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in the Orkin Catalyst, doubling your mod capacity. This one costs you 20 plat to have installed. You can grind one from Nightwave and you can also get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie. Also, various events in Warframe also carry a Auto King Catalyst as a reward. My Vectus Prime has been formatted a total of 6 times. That's because I, I need to carry an Eidolon build, one for Chroma, one for not Chroma, normal builds, and even with 6 it's still not enough to actually showcase all of the builds I wanted to. But there's good news for the weapon build I'm recommending you guys for Forma should do it. On a whole lot of weapons, it's not really worth unlocking the Weapon Excellus mod slot, but considering the recoil on the weapon, go for Stabilizer 100%. This one makes it a whole lot easier to use. Allow me to show you how this is. Full fire rate. Now that is a whole lot better than before. And mostly all of the bullets are landing in the exact same spot from 22 meters, which is more than respectable. I also want to talk about the accuracy and heavy calibre. 13.3, that's normal for sniper rifles, but again, it's pinpoint accurate. If you go heavy cal and multi-shot, because you will go multi-shot, especially considering that this is a sniper rifle and you want that combo multiplier, take a look. Some of the bullets are landing completely off the crosshairs. Now, if you're using this to hunt Eidolon, which I'm assuming most of you will be doing, if you can get close enough to the Synovia, it won't really matter all that much. You can use it if you really want to, but from my point of view, it's not needed, especially considering that you have a whole lot of fantastic options for the weapon. So I do not recommend Heavy Cal. 
Critical chance and critical damage, 30% with 2.0x. Decent at best. When it comes to sniper rifles, this is decent. I would have loved to see at least 40%, but it's nothing to sneeze at. The drop-off or the fall-off, better said, is standard for any sniper rifle between 400 and 600 tuna. Fire rate of 2.67 with a magazine of two multi shot of one noise alarming, punch through of one meter, so basically it goes through the grenier shield dude, and 0.9 seconds on the reload. And because of these stats and a certain combination with Arcanes, you can actually make the Vectus Prime into a bit of a assault rifle of sorts that feeds its ammo directly from the ammunition reserve. But more on that just a tad later. Riven Disposition 2 out of 5 because again this is quite the popular weapon. Rivens for this one are still worth getting and if you get the right roll, you can get minus magazine capacity which would mean prime chamber usage or charged chamber usage because believe it or not having a magazine capacity of two is not a plus for the vectus prime the normal one has only one magazine capacity which makes using using prime chamber a whole lot more comfortable plus 100 percent multiplicative damage on first shot in the magazine which is fantastic and of course you also got an old fan favorite charged chamber now you can actually use both of them. Once upon a time, Prime Chamber used to cost an arm, a leg, and three kidneys. So yes, you would have to source a third kidney. Not anymore. Ever since Battle brought this one, it's I think about 100 plat on the PC trade chat. Please check Warframe Market for more appropriate prices. Essentially, Charge Chamber was a poor man's primed chamber. So there you go. This is actually not a good thing that it has a magazine capacity of two. Status chance on sniper rifles is a debate I want to have a separate video on. Honestly, I don't believe we should have status chance on sniper rifles. These are the weapons that are supposed to one-shot your target as long as you're skilled enough or patient enough to actually hit the right part of your target. Not necessarily a headshot per se, but for example, maybe you're using Banshee with uh, weak points and so on and so forth. When it comes to the actual damage on the weapon, 350 total. And you know what? For a sniper rifle, uh-uh. It's not all that high, but this one can be rapid fired, so it kinda evens out. Most of the damage will be puncture and impact. And impact, impact is still bloody horrible, but puncture is not all that bad because it deals extra damage to heavily armored targets, such as Eidolon Synovias. Eidolon Synovias are equipped with alloy armor, which take extra damage from puncture and from radiation damage as well, which is why we build our uh, weapons with radiation when we go fight. Eidolons. Now, let's hop into a standard build. And you get damage acceleration, multi shot with split chamber, critical chance, critical damage with point strike, vital sense, and four mod slots open. That's because it really depends on you what you want to do with this weapon from this point onwards. Do you want to take it Eidolon hunting? Do you want to take it to normal average everyday missions? And I'm fully aware that not a whole lot of you guys are going to be using this in normal missions, so we're going to kind of skim through this part of the review. Really quick though, let's go with the standard build. Yes, more multi-shot, yeah, absolutely. Vigilante armaments and that 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons that you can get from your Sentinel's weapons. You don't really need to think about that bonus like that. Hunter munitions, uh, fine, Hunter munitions. And of course the Vital Elemental combo between the two 60-60 mods, Rhyme Rounds and Malignant Force. Template apiece from the PC trade chat. If not, you farm this one from Spy Missions and this one from Corrupted Vore in the Void. We're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120 just so you can see what kind of performance you can expect from the Vectus Prime in normal average everyday missions. Straight for headshot, kaboom! Uh, nothing. Almost nothing, but this one is almost dead. A bona fide 80% shot, simply because you can get one shots with a Vectus Prime with a build such as this, if you're lucky enough to get a slash like this one. 27,000, absolutely huge, but if you don't get a slash, there's no GG. 39,000, it really depends if it was a red slash or not, how many vital procs you had on your target. So again, it can definitely one shot a high level target, but it's not really all that consistent even though at times it appears extremely powerful and i'm not the kind of guy just to show you the great shots hey it one shot it five times out of ten uh, mm, not really good enough now what you can do by the way no buffs from chroma no corrosive projection no anything of the sort let's try a fan favorite have you heard of depleted reload 
ha <laughs> ha, the reload which is depleted, you're gonna be using this one so you can use Prime Chamber, obviously. So we can go for a raw strength approach, right? So get rid of Hunter Munitions because let's be honest here, I hope everybody by this point is tired of the bloody thing and we're gonna be getting rid of Viral as well. So what we can do, go depleted reload, go Prime Chamber. If you don't got it, you can use Charge Chamber, but if you don't got it, it's kind of pointless to go down this route, so... There you go. As for the last mod slot on the weapon, we can actually make the corrosive elemental combo, right? We are shooting corrupted heavy goons. If we want the biggest wallop worth of damage, we're gonna need corrosive. And for corrosive, of course, we're gonna be using the two 90 mods instead. Well, of course, uh, again, we want a one-shot kill. We don't want to play around with statuses. And when it comes to sniper rifles, I always encourage you guys to go for the 90 mods if you want to get a one-shot. And once again, straight for headshots take a look at that a single shot on the target that was 75 percent off the health bar and that was no combo multiplier now i got a little bit of combo multiplier so i can basically two shot or even one shot these targets if i manage to get lucky enough with r and jesus like that basically i got a single and again, I got a single multi-shot mod on the weapon, split chamber, 90%. So I got a 90% chance per shot at double bullets. But also that means a 10% chance per shot at a single bullet. My critical chance is not 100%, it's 75%. So basically, if I want a one-shot, a level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goon right now, with this combo multiplier, what I'm gonna be needing is both of those bullets to be a crit on the target, right? Like that. Essentially, you can get lucky, but on the other hand, if you want to leave it to our and Jesus, sometimes you will get a little bit disappointed. So, you can build a weapon in this fashion as well with the pre reload and make with 90 mods for the biggest wallop worth of damage. Actually, and this will close out the standard average everyday build because, again, I don't think there's a lot of you guys who bring the Vectus Prime in normal missions simply because when it comes to primary weapons, you got a lot. A lot better options. Uh, sniper only sortie? <laughs> Use the Volcar Wraith. Trust me, it's fantastic. Now, if I was to go idle on hunting with Volt, not Chroma, okay? I, I stress this, with Volt, then I'm gonna simply go for radiation damage, like so. And you can go with Hellfire, you simply swap out Toxin, like this. If you don't want to go this route, let's say you don't have Prime Chamber or you don't have, or you don't want to use Depleted Reload, what you can do is drop these two and you do have a couple of options. More multi-shot, always, especially considering that we are using a sniper rifle and we do want to get that multiplier as high as we can, as fast as we can. And the last slot, you can use a couple of things. Heavy Caliber is what I would recommend as long as you're sure you're not going to be missing any of your bullets off the Synovia. When you get to the third Eidolon, and he's a whole lot bigger, you can simply jump a little bit, then aim, make sure you're close to the Synovia, not to miss any of your shots. And that's for Volt, or basically anybody else who wants to, a normal, quote-unquote, normal frame that can farm Eidolons. Volt is meta right now, but you can still use Chroma, and I'll show you why and how. Now, Chroma kind of dropped from grace ever since the removed self-damage in Warframe. However, they didn't remove it completely from all weapons. When you build a sniper rifle for Chroma, you never use damage mods such as Heavy Caliber or Serration because of how Vex Armor works. Instead, you plow on that radiation damage as high as you can, still multi-shot prio, still critical chance, critical damage prio, but after that, you go for as much radiation as you can, which is why we're not going to be using Serration, which is why on this build you see Wildfire and Fermite rounds. Again, I want to try to get that radiation as high as I can. And Vex Armor will do the rest. And I'm going to show you this build in action. When it comes to Chroma, this is the standard. Okay, this is the build you're going to be seeing with Deadeye 957 uh, or Selfish Chroma. Basically, you got that buff as high as it can go. Actually, it can go a little bit higher, but this is more than enough. What is interesting is the Arcane selection. You got Arcane Momentum. On critical hit, 60% chance for plus 150% reload, speed to sniper rifles for 12 seconds, and of course, arcane acceleration. This one is a whole lot of fire rate. When you use these two in combination with the Vectis Prime, it basically kind of becomes a little bit of a machine gun, and you can rapid fire it. Especially if you choose to go 
for something like depleted reload with prime chamber shot after shot after shot is absolutely fantastic and then we're going to be talking about ribbons because i have some very interesting well a very interesting ribbon to show you but in the meantime this is the performance you can expect out of this build with chroma oh and by the way how do you get your self damage on uh normally from the Adlon, but you can still use the stug my friends allow me to give you a quick demonstration i was not aware of this Feature, I'm gonna call it a feature simply because I don't know if it's a bug or not And I want to give props to a player called Nixos who logged into my discord Gave me a video and showed me that the stug still deals self damage one thing though Make sure you run into a line like this in a circle Okay, and as you can see I take a whole lot of damage activate your free ability your vex armor and just do this See that a whole lot of self damage 957 so basically I'm maxed out right now the self damage happens when the ball hits the ground. Okay, not necessarily when it explodes. You see that? No self damage on the explosion, which is why you don't want to stack the same and make a big ball. You want to run around like so and get your self damage on. Now, allow me to show you some results in an idle on hunt. Almost gone. Done. Done. Then kill it. Because there, there is where I put my 100 shields. Oh, I don't shoot for your shields. I didn't shoot for your mm. shields because I wanted to see what it can do without Vault Shield. You know, when you showcase it in a vid, you wanna, you want to show people what the weapon does without extras. You're right. And well, you I'll keep. Put... I'll use them later. Don't worry. I will. And you wanna put shield for the operator, so we deal more damage. That too. But That's you put the important. operator shield at the feet of the Eidolon in general. Yeah. There you go. And there we go. Now, of course, if you don't one shot consistently, what you can do is basically build up some combo multiplier. But as you can see, it only takes like a nanosecond to one shot a to destroy a Synovia. I mean, sure, it's not a one bullet, but it's like a second and a half because with the combination of the arcanes that you're using on Chroma, acceleration and momentum, what essentially happens, you transform the Vectis into a rapid fire machine, which is fantastic, or could be fantastic. See? Like that. Easy. No ribbon. No ribbon setup whatsoever. And it's so comfortable and easy because the advantage that Vectus has over other sniper rifles, over something like the Lanka, if anybody still uses the Lanka, is the fact that if you miss big kaboob, you know, you're just gonna reshoot it really, really quick. So it doesn't really matter that much if you miss with this weapon. Now, I will admit I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to Eidolon hunts. We're not as quick as we used to be, but this should prove a point. I got a bead on it, baby. Take it out. When I her down. Bro. But you know, it ain't that hard. Done. But probably the fought the exact same thing. Take a look at that. Now you see him. Now you don't. Kapoosh. But of course, I was shooting through the vault shield this time. Yes. It's important to tell the difference in case you don't have a vault in your party. I can always shoot the shield, but I choose not to, just so you guys can fully understand exactly what kind of damage you are looking at. So what do you guys think, huh? Not bad, considering that we haven't used the Riven mod in that setup. Again, you can still use Chroma with your favorite sniper rifles, in case you guys didn't know. Maybe this is a known thing, I had no idea that the stock performs like this. It's actually useful for once, it's basically the worst weapon in the game. So there you go, I don't know if it's a bug or it's a feature, and I'm hoping that the will leave it alone as it is is but let's try a more powerful build allow me to talk about rivens this one is not mine it's not mine put your rotten tomatoes down it's a loner multi-shot <laughs> jesus multi-shot critical chance damage minus magazine capacity minus 44.9 is enough to bring down the magazine capacity to only one and now you can use prime chamber on the weapon without the need of depleted reload and this is huge this is absolutely freaking huge. Allow me to 
show you a small demonstration with Warframe buffs, as in Chroma's buffs, on some, well, to simulate this not corrupted heavy goons because they have ferrite armor, what we want to use is bombards. Bombards have alloy armor. Uh, I don't know, let's spawn like 20 of them, level whatever level you want, it doesn't really matter all that much. And again, it's very simple, use your stug to get your damage on, activate Chroma's free ability, hit the ground, run around in a circle, like so. So you, again, you don't want to make one big ball with the stug, what you want to do is put them in different places so you get that self damage on. Okay, now let's see what the weapon can do. We're not gonna go for a straight headshot, because when you're shooting idle on Synovias, you don't get a headshot multiplier. We're gonna go for a groin shot, or a body shot, or... And of course, as the combo multiplier goes up, the damage gets to stupid high levels. Now, my friends, of course, ribbons such as this one, even at this point, 2 out of 5 will make a huge difference on the weapon. And they cost an arm and a leg and 5 kidneys, so in this case, you're gonna have to source 3 additional kidneys. But if you want the best, basically, this would be the best. Now, let's see some uh, results in Eidolon Hunts. He's crying, hold on, and tap, easy, listen, you are useful, don't ignore me, you know, I'm just like, up to my usual shenanigans, teleport, by the way, and tap, oh, baby, with the Vectus Prime, just saying, just saying, tap, oh, that wasn't a one-shot sober, stick a fork in me, I'm done. Down. It wasn't the one shot. Only if you would have used the Volt Shield. I know, right? If you would have used the Volt Shield, bro. The Volt Shield, I keep putting... The Look, I'll shoot the next one. Okay, for the Volt Shield. Where's the Volt Shield? Okay, here I come. Look. Alright? Look. Thank you, Super War. I appreciate your max usefulness. Alright. I will stay here and shoot through the shield. Like a good chroma. There. We good now? We good? Done. There's the ugly one. And then there's the green. One shot. Die. Done. Contained. Yeah. Now you never liked them, so you can't miss them, catch. Done. Yeah. Dead. Easy. And that is pretty much it, my friends. As you can see, the Vectus Prime can still be a top-tier sniper rifle if you know exactly what you're doing. As always, my name is Blazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you're wondering which is the best weapon to hunt Eidolons, honestly, guys, it's not as it was before. Before, you had the Lanka, which basically reigned supreme. Then the Vectus kind of showed up, but it wasn't a one-shot. You had to rapid-fire it. Not everybody was into it. The Rubico Prime came along and basically murdered all opposition, and then came heavy weapons. The Velocitus is much more powerful than the Lanka, and you can get your self-damage on using the Hema in the case of Chroma. So it's not a simple question to answer anymore. What I can tell you is that I still prefer using the Vectus Prime simply because it's fun, simply because I like the rapid fire, simply because if I miss a shot... I'm not gonna be feeling horrible about it because, again, I have that rapid fire ability. If you got any feedback for me, by all means, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. And if you enjoy the content, if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. But until next time, my friends, bye bye.